Hey everyone, it's Dale Walker here, and uh, today I'm being joined with Christian Johansson. He's the owner of Foot Solutions in Vancouver, British Columbia, and he's been working in the field of pedorthics for over 18 years. Uh, he has a health team that really works with physical therapists like myself, pedorthists, um, rolfers, chiropractors, registered massage therapists, and other foot care um, nurses. And he provides relief to certain arthritic conditions of the feet, toe deformities, plantar fasciitis, you name it, he does it. And today we're going to talk about um, 3D printed orthotics, which um, I just investigated over the weekend. So um, yes, before I think I even knew about what our topic was going to be. So um, thank you so much, Christian, for taking the time to join me. And I wanted to um, ask you a couple of, uh, yeah, let's, let's get on it. So, you know, could you just tell me quickly, how are 3D orthotics different than traditional orthotics? A very good question, Dee. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a very interesting product. I mean, the reason I, I looked at 3D printing in the first place is because some years ago, I read an article about this uh, study coming out of the UK where they were testing these 3D printed orthotic products with a bunch of uh, patients there. And they said that, you know, the response was phenomenal. People love the product compared to whatever they've had in the past and really appreciate uh, the fit and, uh, of the product itself. And that's kind of where I got interested. Okay, 3D printing makes a lot of sense, you know, because it's additive manufacturing as opposed to subtractive manufacturing, which we've been using in the past. And both of those, uh, you know, do work very well in terms of just translating the, the support from a, what you want to call it, like the foot shape to the actual device. You know, so Amfit, I don't know if you know Amfit um, orthotics, but they've been around for a long time since the 80s. We've been using that, that particular system in our stores for some time. And what's interesting about it is the fact that, uh, you know, that, that basically caused us to capture the foot in a 3D environment. And then from there, transfer it right onto the actual impression of it uh, in a uh, milling system where we would just subtract the uh, material that we didn't want from a block of foam, right? Uh, but with 3D printing, it changed that whole spectrum from what they get. We can actually design this device now in a computer system and then print it out, right? And the, the cool thing about it is also not just, uh, you know, one of the things with the Amphit system, even though it's, it's a great system, I still use it today, is the fact that the duplication aspect is very, very difficult. You know, that was kind of the biggest challenge with most orthotics on the market is that if we had something that really worked very well, right? and now we wanted to duplicate that, the second set wouldn't come out exactly the same. And most of that had to do with the fact that, you know, you ended up, you know, potentially, because the way we do orthotics is we, we take the foot impression, we create a positive mold of that foot impression, and then we, we go and we actually mold a piece of plastic or something else onto the bottom of that impression. But now your finishing touches, you know, are all up to the individual making that device, right? So if I'm making it a little bit narrow, I mean, I might grind it a little bit less on one side, a little bit more on the other side, and now it, it fits technically still very much the same, but it is a little bit different, right? And with 3D printing, we were able to actually duplicate the devices, you know, a, a thousand times and have them come out exactly the same. And that's kind of the, the thing that I really appreciated about the 3D printing technology. Now, how do you go ahead and determine, you know, correct fit? How, how, if somebody comes for a 3D printed orthotic, what, what do they do? What do they do? Yeah. Well, the thing is that uh, we've been using different technologies to, mm -hmm. to cap, capture the foot. Uh, one of was the Amphit system. We've been using that in the past for 3D printed orthotics as well. So one of the companies we're working with was, in, uh, was a local company called Weave that has since kind of moved into the more uh, streamlined space of uh, you know, working directly with the public as opposed to focusing on the uh, custom-made you know, 3D uh, printed product. Uh, and then that's why we're now working with Podfo, which is a UK company. But uh, the difference between uh, you know, like capturing the foot in, uh, in a 3D environment and printing it, uh, like what we really want to do is number one, take a look at the foot, you know, see what's going on. Are they overprotonating, are they supinating? because based on that, we change how we are going to design the device, right? So uh -huh. somebody that supinates, for example, 
uh, will work walk a lot more on the outside of the foot. So now we have to stabilize that foot a little bit more on the outside. And what's very cool about this 3D printed technology is that I can make the, la the lateral edge, the outside edge firmer mm -hmm. on the device and then the inside edge more flexible so that we actually encouraging the toe, uh, the foot to move from its you know, outside heel strike to big toe push off in a more uh, significant form, uh, fashion in that sense, right? So, yeah. So you have a lot to do um, yourself with the, mo the actual modification of the device. It's because the one that I saw, you kind of just stood on a platform and then there were kind of like laser lights taking pictures, something came up on a screen to show me yeah. where I was weight bearing and then I think the guy was gonna print me something. So uh, it sounds to me like there's a lot more um, involvement than just doing that with the individuals. And, uh, you know, I'm going to assume that you take into account their subjective complaints and what their goals are and, and those kinds of things as well. So it sounds more hands on to me than what I had seen. So oh, absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, with Pedorthix, it's, it's really the, the you know, as a podorcist, we, we're trained to help clients, you know, figure out what is the problem, just like you as a physio, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, the patient comes in and have a complaint. Well, maybe that pain is coming from the hip, maybe it's coming from their feet, maybe it's coming from somewhere else in the body, but you are the one that, you know, has to make the professional decision as to how you're going to approach that problem, right? And, and it's like, oh, doctor, it hurts when I do this. Okay, well, let's figure out why it's doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, is it, you know, me, that, and that, that's why it, you know, when, when you were stressing in my introduction is that I, I, I love to have a team of professionals behind me that I can, number one, access mm -hmm. uh, and talk to, right, professionally ask questions about it on, on a patient case and then potentially refer out to them, you know, before I even make a device. Uh, if I see that, you know, there's maybe, okay, was well, a tightness here that we need to loosen up first, you know, so that your foot can kind of fall into place a little bit better. So that the device is actually going to work better for you, you know, because you can't expect, you know, just a, a piece of plastic or foam or whatever in your shoe to to cure all your ills. You know, it's 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 a, it's a little bit of a it's a little bit more complicated approach than that, right? Absolutely, and in, in even the design too. And that's what was another question of mine: is that if somebody is in the process you, and you're familiar familiar with my work and and my clients. Um, they're, they're in the process of actually trying to change the forces that are acting on their foot. They're trying to work on the connective tissue and kind of redesign the foot. So yeah. at what point um, is orthotic intervention appropriate or, and or um, do you feel that individuals should be uh, you know, taped the way that they would normally tape their foot for the realignment phase of what I do um, when they're being fitted. What's your, what's your take on that? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, obviously disclaimer that I'm working with you with the, uh, you know, program as well. So I'm not going to just say it's like, Hey, you <laughs> know, <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're not necessarily trying to sell something here, but we're just, you know, I, I believe that, you know, what you teach with regards to fixing the bunions and fixing the feet is extremely important to, to teach people that as well, because, you know, we, we use also use uh, items like the correct toes, which I know we've discussed mm -hmm. with uh, discussed in the past, which have uh, a great benefit in the marketplace. But at the same time, if you don't combine that with some exercises to loosen up the feet, they're right. not always going to work for you, right? So, and and that's the same with an orthotic device. I mean, sometimes you know, if you're if you're looking at a foot that's you know very supinated. Uh, maybe we can get that to loosen up over time by correcting it and putting some pressures on it. But maybe it's already in such a tight um, position that uh, if we add more pressure on the outside to get that foot to, in a sense, pronate and roll in more, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that pressure might become very uncomfortable because of the fact that they've been fixed in that position for such a long time. Uh, so unless they change very quickly, and, and especially I'm, I'm talking about the high arched foot, the, uh, the past mm -hmm. foot or the supinated foot, it's because of the fact that that's usually a very tight foot that doesn't move as easily, right? Mm -hmm. So that, uh, you know, sometimes you may have to do manipulative techniques to, to get that foot to kind of roll in more and prevent it from putting so much pressure on the outside. And that's, I think, where, you know, the, the whole uh, idea of structural realignment of the tissues and uh, bone structures, you know, through tissue manipulation and taping can have a, a significant benefit in helping that client get to where they want to go to faster, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. And then when you're working with the orthotics, um, I think you had mentioned that the th one of the benefits of the 3D is that uh, it seems like there's a less kind of time to get used to them, you know, because whenever we're making a biomechanical change, I always say to people, as long as it's not your pain and it's not excruciating, then that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, because it's just your body kind of adapting to a new situation. So um, what is your recommendation, uh, you know, with the 3D uh, printed orthotics? I mean, a 3D printed, I have very few issues mm -hmm. because it is the most flexible device. I mean, I brought some samples here as well. Oh, cool. So, right? Yeah. So this one here is the, uh, what, we, what, it, what we designed with them, a uh, heel release technology. So we actually created a, a hole in the back of it. Uh -huh. So that way the heel and the forefoot are on the same level. But you can see that the material itself is quite bendy, right? Mm. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. see that when I'm okay, bending yeah. it now. But it's quite flexible. And the purpose behind that, especially if you're a runner or a very active individual, you don't want something that completely blocks how the foot moves, right? We want to make sure that the actual foot has the ability to go from the outside heel strike to big to a push off without it being like feeling like it's, it's landing on a block off, whatever, right? And that's really the important part of, of making the device more flexible. And it's, it's kind of going back to more that European philosophy of making orthotics, where most of the pedorsists there or orthot or orthotists that work with the orthotics there, what they really focus on is using cork or EVA materials, you know, that are a little bit more flexible, a little more giving uh, to kind of support that foot in that transition process, but not totally take away all of the movement because then you, in a sense, weaken the muscle structures. And that's some, something that's been definitely, uh, you know, something that I have a lot of people come in and it's like, oh yeah, isn't the orthotics going to cause my muscles to weaken? And to me, it's like, yes, it can, right? But I mean, in, in the end, you're still moving. The question is, are you doing certain movements like, you know, pronation or supination to an excessive amount, in, in an excessive, excessive amount that you have to then go in and really focus in on, on okay, well, let's, let's correct that a little bit, you know, because if you're spending all your time walking on the outside of your foot, or you're spending all your time walking on the inside of your foot, you're going to overwork those muscles, and we're going to have to re uh, correct that a little bit, especially if you're going to be on your feet all day in retail or maybe you're on your feet all day in construction, or you're on your feet all day in the medical field, like, you know, a doctor, a nurse, you know, anybody that has, is spending a ton of time on those, uh, on those feet. I think it's really important to make sure that those muscles don't get overused so that they don't get overly tired, which can then cause other issues down the line, right? But uh, that's, that's kind of how I look at it from my perspective. <clears throat> and then um, you had mentioned that they're very reproducible, that you can make the exact same, um, orthotic over and over again because you uh, because of the printing technology. Yeah. Um, how about how do you modify a 3D orthotic? Um, would you I mean, the uh, modification is a little bit more challenging. Yeah. To, to be honest, uh, because of the fact that uh, we, can, we can still modify them. It's, it's made of the material itself is made of uh, flex nylon, right? So this material itself can be ground, uh, we can, you know, shave on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. to make some small changes and it can be heated up a little bit as well if we need to adjust it slightly but uh, it is uh, that's definitely something that I'm still kind of trying to figure out how to make that better uh, is to figure out okay how can we actually modify these once they come in you know if they you know maybe have to be tweaked a little bit here and there uh, we do modify them on a regular basis um, if we need to I have very few times that I have to and pod for themselves really wants to you know have the ability to kind of have something that comes right out of the box and fits you know, that kind of approach where, you know, if it doesn't fit, they, they do like us to kind of send it back and tell them, like, hey, this is not working. Can we remake this? Uh, and then, you know, see if we can adjust it. Uh, and that's something that they, they definitely have promised to help with, just to make sure that the client gets something that is actually working for them. And if it's not perfectly working for them, then we need to make, make sure that it, those adjustments are done. So now tell me um, a little bit more about, you know, we talked about some of the benefits with the 3D orthotics. Um, how, how do they differ? Um, what are some of the other benefits versus traditional orthotics, aside from, re, you know, being able to replicate them um, very easily, being able to kind of modify it on the computer before it gets printed out? Like who, um, you know, who else is going to um, benefit from these orthotics versus traditional? Well, I think anybody that uh, that's complaining about tired feet at the end of the day, 
and it spends a lot of time on their feet can benefit from a orthotic device for sure. Uh, I mean, I, it doesn't have to be custom made. Sometimes you can even look at some off the shelf devices as well, which we offer too, right? right. I mean, you have to figure out what's the client's budget because mm -hmm. when you go custom made, you know, in Canada, it's quite pricey. You're looking at 400 to $600 for a pair of orthotics, right? So, I mean, that's a lot of money and not everybody can afford it. We do have a lot of plans, insurance plans that do cover those devices. So that, you know, helps a little bit, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, if that's not in your budget, Hey, come see a podorsis anyway, because we can help you in, you know, many different ways as well to kind of either, you know, through alignment techniques, uh, you know, like you are offering mm -hmm. uh, to teach that too, right. Uh, you know, yeah. through um, foot care, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> options like the foot care nurses that we have as well to help with nail treatments that, you know, may be bothering people and then also through off the shelf devices or even footwear, certain footwear has, some pretty decent support nowadays if you have select brands you know that that have good arch support uh you can look at those as well as an option uh, outside of that but uh, the other benefits you know getting back to your question there with regards to orthotics is number one uh with the 3d printed orthotic isn't it we can print this uh this kind of holy shape here what's mm -hmm. nice about it and what i loved about this and the reason i you know i wanted to uh, use 3d printed as well is because we i'm not sure if you're familiar with cobra orthotics but it's basically I have a, heard of them, yes. So it's it's not really a different orthotic. It just means that when you're trying to design something that fits into a dress shoe, they usually take the lateral edge away mm -hmm. to allow it to fit better. And, and that was a big concern for me because of the fact that, you know, if I'm supporting just the medial side, the inner side of the foot, mm -hmm. you know, we want to make sure that everybody understands what yes. we're talking about here. Big toe and not side. the outside of the foot, right? right. So uh, the big toe side then uh, what happens is that uh, you know, now you're basically shifting the foot and then causing it to just lean out more without it actually being supported on the side. Even though there's a small little wedge that comes around the heel, mm -hmm. I didn't feel that it provided enough stability for the average user. And then as a result, you know, I wasn't having a lot of success with it. But I have tons of clients who are younger. They, don't maybe, they maybe don't want to wear the types of shoes that we sell at our stores, mm -hmm. uh, which you know, they're getting more fashion forward all the time. But I get it, you know, if you're in your 20s and your 30s, you want to wear the Converse, you want to wear those Adidas sneakers, you want to wear the Nikes, you want to wear all these different brands that maybe don't have the level of support that you're looking for. But I wanted to, be ha wanted to have the ability for me to have something that you can fit easily in there that we can actually design to fit there. And what's cool with 3D printing is I can take a picture off that sole with a measuring tape right beside it. And we can actually design a device to fit perfectly in that, in that shoe based on that image because we can tweak it in the 3D uh -huh. software to make sure that it's not too wide for that footwear, uh -huh. right? So that's a cool thing, obviously, because we're not designing something, then tweaking it. We're actually designing it with the, sh the footwear right. in mind. Uh, we can also design it for like a higher heel shoe uh, by making sure that the angle of pitch of the device is going to be correct so that when you're standing in that shoe, the uh, device doesn't, you know, if it's flat, like this one here is designed for a kind of a flatter shoe and you put it in an angled shoe, there's pretty much this gap, you know, like my mm -hmm. hand is right now, right there. And it's going to cause the device to actually right. fall, cause you to be pushed out of the footwear and therefore you, you don't have it fitting properly. And that's what's cool about 3D printing. We can design the devices to actually fit the slope of the shoe based on measurements that we do before we even make the device. So that's a, that's a cool feature there as well. So if you wanted to get, um orthotics, 3D um, orthotics for various shoes, buying more than one. Um, is it then less expensive or is it just the same amount um, regardless? No, we disc I mean, if we, di we discount the second and third pairs, mm -hmm. you know, if we're doing it from the same cast because it doesn't involve any work on our part, so it's right. definitely a, a reduction in the cost for the user. And um, how versatile are the, the, orth uh, the orthotics? I mean, if it's a flat shoe, can it go in most flat shoes? Or if it's a sneaker, can it go in most sneakers? You know, that kind of thing. It's just really- Yeah, if you have a design for a particular shoe, you can pretty much fit it into, into flatter shoes all the time. I mean, you can probably go up to like, uh, I would say um, half inch heel or so without mm -hmm. it being a big problem. But if you start going into high heels where the pitch and the angle of the shoe becomes more severe, then you would definitely have to look at redesigning that orthotic device to fit in there properly. And if, you know, that's, that's always a question we ask as well when the client comes in, it's like, okay, what shoes are you going to be wearing this in? Because if you're just going to be wearing it in a um, pair of sneakers, you know, then 
we can design it differently than if you're going to wear it in your casual shoes, your semi-dress shoes, and then you all see your sneakers. Now we're going to have, you know, we're going to design it more for that semi-dress shoe if you wear it quite frequently to make sure that it fits into all of those different categories of shoes. You know, if it fits in a dress shoe, it pretty much is going to fit into almost all the other shoes as well. And one other cool benefit of the 3D printing is that, I don't know if you can see that here, but you can see how there's these, these little mesh designs there where there's almost holes in there, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's the uh, idea behind this uh, product uh, is to have this basically allow the sweat to kind of pass through so you can sweat through the device. Uh, and we also uh, primarily usually try not to sell these with top covers because one of the things with top covers is that they wear down over time and then it causes the, the, the actual um, support of the orthotic device to shift. So it changes the, the way it fits. That makes sense. And that's why uh, we tend to just do kind of three quarter length with uh, no top cover so that number one, you can wash them. Mm -hmm. right? the smell, you can wash them. Number two, you can, we can design them with these different patterns so that you, know, you actually can sweat through the device. So it's not just a solid piece that doesn't allow anything to pass through. Like, right. It doesn't matter what kind of orthotic you have. If it has a top cover on it, it's gonna be a layer of glue there which is not going to allow that to breathe unless you actually punch holes into the material somehow to allow the, the foot to kind of perspire through that particular product. Right, right. And how long, um, how long do they last somebody typically? Uh, these come actually with a three-year warranty. So that's uh, you know three-year warranty on, on manufacturing defects and things like that. Uh, I would say most orthotics uh, in, in this material range would probably last anywhere from three to 10 years, depending on, on the use and how, you know, heavy the individual is and uh, how much pressure and force they put on the device itself and then you know if it's been a number of years like five you know five ten you know five or more years you would need to recast them correct uh that's a uh, um i mean personally it really depends hmm. right like I, I do it's kind of one of these uh these myths i believe that you know people should get their feet recasted all the time right um but then people still use their old orthotics, right? So that, you know, the, the, the thing is that uh, I think it's more something on behalf of the practitioner that wants to sell another product mm -hmm. as opposed to us, you know, just kind of like saying, it's like, hey, um, you know, why, if, you, if you're happy with your currently, what you currently have, then you can just pretty much make the same device and it would still work the same That's a good point. Way, right? Uh, so I don't feel that, you know, unless there's been changes in your feet, maybe you had a car accident or there was some other Injury. accident in, in your life, an injury that yeah. caused your, your, your biomechanics to be changed a little bit, then obviously it makes sense to you know, recapture the foot and make sure that everything is still working properly. Uh, it doesn't mean that the older orthotics is going to be uh, null and void. It just means that we may have to look at that again and recalibrate it a little bit to make it work with that, uh, that foot again or that body you know, shape at that time. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I don't believe that you have to necessarily recast the foot all the time unless there's a problem and that's why you know people sometimes you know i had a client just on the weekend asking me the same thing it's like oh i've had this orthotic for 20 years you know should i get it a new one and I said, it's like well is it hurting you no uh, is it working well for you yes okay and then it, it looked like it was fitting properly on the arch right so yeah i said like hey unless you want a second pair for whatever reason there's mm -hmm. no reason for you to actually change this right uh but i i would i suggested hey You've got a top cover on here that looks a little bit dated. We can replace that for you, right? It's just kind of, you know, allowing people to understand that, you know, uh, some things are just sales boys and we always want to build relationships with clients first. If they want to have a second pair, I'm happy to make it. But, you know, if, uh, if you're happy with whatever you have right now and it's working for you, no need to change it. So now, you know, I know, I know some PTs or physios that go ahead and they'll make orthotics and then uh, podiatrists who make orthotics and now um, podorthists who make orthotics as well. You know, how do you decide who to go to for your orthotics? How do you decide who to go to? Um, I mean, I think is that if you trust the person that you're working with, mm -hmm. you know, please Please don't uh, don't change what you're doing, right? I mean, if, if you trust what they're saying, if you if you're comfortable with mm -hmm. that decision that you've made, you know, and you don't have uh, that you know uh, regret mm -hmm. feeling after you made the decision, sure. right? Based on you know something that maybe didn't sit right with you, uh, and that's just kind of listening to you, listening to you, what your body is telling you, right? I mean, that whole idea of gut feeling 
you know, mm-hmm. it's more to do with like, well, I don't really know why it doesn't feel right, but it doesn't feel right, you know? So, uh, you know, move on that, uh, you know, make sure that you're comfortable with whoever you're working with and right. then that whatever they're telling you, you know, like I, I, I don't pressure anybody interested mm-hmm. because it's not, it's not, I don't have to, right. So it's like, if he, if he can explain, if I can explain to the client as to why they need something mm-hmm. uh, and they understand that from their perspective, then that's really, you know, what's going to um, allow us to, to help them better mm-hmm. because they're proactive about the treatment. If I'm just telling them that this is what you need, that's not the right approach. Right. And, and I believe there's, you know, chiropractors, physios and podiatrists, they're all great at what they do. Uh, the question is, you know, are they just selling this to you because it's an add-on sale, or are they selling to you because it's 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 their best option for you, right? Mm-hmm. It, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily matter which devices you use, how you capture it, you know, right. what materials are necessarily made of, as long as you understand why you're getting something, and uh, you understand how that's going to help you in your rehabilitation, you're you're going to be just fine, right? So, uh, you know, I don't see that as a difference. I mean, one of the things though. Uh, also, is, you know, number one, it's like, you know, are they able to modify the product for you, mm-hmm. right, in their office, or is it going to be like a two or three week process to get the device back and forth from who, whoever they they've ordered from, right? right. And that's one of the things with Podorsis, uh, we have a lab in the back, so we have glues, we have you know materials, we have all these different things that allows us to make modifications on the spot when something needs to be tweaked, so that we can do that for the client the same day, as opposed to having them you know, return, you know, every two weeks mm-hmm. to kind of pick up the change device. And then, you know, we're not really able to, to really test something with them. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I often, one of the things that I tend to recommend, not just with orthotics, but, you know, kind of with anything, is this what the person does all the time? You know, like yeah. if you want to go to, you know, if you want a hip replacement, you want to go to somebody who replaces hips like every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so that, that would be something that I, you know, that I'll just add there. Um, my two cents of one of the things that I, I tend to look for is that um, I really want to go to the guy who does it all the time, not the person who yeah. asks like one or two a month or, you know, or a year even, um, you know, and I, I don't do them at all. So it totally wouldn't come to me. <laughs> but um, you know, again, you want to deal with people who are, you know, this is their bread and butter. This is what they're doing. And I really like the fact that um, what you said about being able to, you know, work the orthotic with the shoe at the same, you know, concurrently, because yeah. that is, you know, that's really going to cover that aspect of, you know, this kind of holistic model of, you know, treating, you know, every aspect of somebody's foot pain. You know, and, and, and that's the beauty of our, I agree. That's the beauty of our franchise model with foot solutions is the fact that we have the ability to have a footwear or an orthotic solution or the combination of the two, right? In some cases, like for example, if I have somebody has hallux ridges, I know we can work on those toes and, and loosen them up over time. But you know, if it's if there's an uh, immediate need for for pain relief right now, okay, well, right. I can rock and roll shoes. I can't help you with an orthotic really because it doesn't improve your walking pattern at all, right? I mean, orthotic right. we can put like a Morton's extension, like I have in this example here. That's the yeah. Morton's extension in the front, which yeah. helps to stiffen the 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 hallux. But at the same time, that's only a um, a, a temporary solution, which is not going to necessarily improve their their foot function. It's just going to, you know, prevent this toe potentially from bending if they're in a flat shoe. But over time, sometimes they even snap because there's too much pressure coming up against it uh, from the way that the foot is trying to move, but it can't, right? Mm-hmm. So I find a rocker sole shoe uh, can make a much bigger difference for that type of individual than, you know, an orthotic itself. So you have to, you have to be able to you know, advise clients on, on those different options and have them try those options so they can understand for themselves what that actually means, right? I'm not asking them to trust me. I'm just asking them, like, try, can you try this for me and let me know how you feel? And then from there, we can, you know, they can actually make a more informed decision as to whether or not that's something, you know, and then we can work on the look of the shoe and stuff like that as well, if that's an issue, right? But, uh, right, yeah. right. And, you know, and again, there's a difference between like therapeutic and then, you know, every day, I mean, ideally, in, in my perfect world, you know, something like, 
you know, how it's rigid is, if you don't move it, you lose it. And you have to be able to do that in a manner that is not, is not being um, detrimental or harmful. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, you know, wearing casts, you'd want to wear casts temporarily to let things kind of heal and settle down, but then eventually, you know, start to challenge um, in a safe manner, um, getting that range of motion back uh, and also, you know, supporting the appropriate muscles. I, I'm actually in the process of releasing a Helix Rigidus program. <laughs> so I have this on the brain right now um, because yeah, you know, by not, you know, by kind of babying it, again, completely appropriate in certain situations, um, but then there has to be at that time, unless you, you're going to be, you know, going for a fusion or uh, another procedure, that if you want to avoid that and maintain a range of motion, doing so in a, in a, a safe in safe environment and kind of weaning off of those, those shoes, if at all possible. So... Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, if, yeah. If the person chooses that, that's how they want to approach it, right? Yeah. Again, yeah. that's that's like taking, telling an alcoholic to get off the bottle. You know, it's like if they don't want to, it's right. not going to happen. But I mean, it's the same with um with arthritis and things like that too, right? Yeah. This, uh, you know, a lot of people say it's like, oh, I have arthritis, so I shouldn't move too much, or they just sit in the right. chair all day. Well, you're going to stiffen up if you exactly. do that. No, you have to move those joints, right? And right. and then again, coming coming back to your point from earlier. It's like a lot of us, you know, we're so afraid of pain, you know, the thing yeah. is that pain is actually what, what in a sense gives you guidance as to, you know, which direction to take, right? Exactly. Uh, it's the same as, it's the same as fear, you know, in business, most of us are afraid of doing something, right? But then when we do it, we feel better right. and we're willing to take another step forward in the right direction, right? So you, you have to make a decision kind of from a um, initial point of like, hey, I'm going to change. I'm going to do something different. And, you know, I'm not going to listen to everybody else that tells me to lay off. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to I want to, I want to do more. So I'm going to have to fix this mm -hmm. or, you know, I can just sit, uh, sit back in my rocking chair and just, you know, wait for my final days. Right. But it's, it's, it's right. your decision to, to make, right. As a, as a human being to either move forward and, you know, challenge the status quo or mm -hmm. to just sit back and do nothing. Right. And then, and then also too, to listen to your body. You know, you to, you know to, really, yeah. really tune in and listen. And as a matter of fact, uh, I know I, I used to teach a balance class in fall prevention, but fear of falling in, its, in and of itself was a risk factor to falls because people would stay home and not be mm -hmm. active. Mm -hmm. And again, there has to be that safe balance um, between, you know, uh, challenging in a, in, a, in a safe and appropriate manner. And, you know, uh, and then also, you know, being mindful of, you know, is this, you know, is this okay? You know, and yeah. can I go a little bit further and, and that type of thing. So, um, yeah, I think we covered everything. So with that, um, we have your contact information below. So if people want to reach out to you in the Vancouver area and, um, and then also, um, I had a U.S. um, podorthist on, uh, on a show also, speaking about footwear, but how do um, people in Canada find a podorthist? How do you find a podorthist? Uh, yeah. Well, there's the uh, Podorthic Association of Canada, okay. and you can find a podorthist near you that way. Uh, so just punch in Podorthic Association Canada, and there will be a listing of all the podorthists across Canada that you can um, work with. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, you know, there's obviously a number of different podorthists in Vancouver that uh, do what we do everybody has you know their own little specialties so some of us will specialize in more diabetic feet others you know well i mean i work mostly with arthritis and um and uh you know plantar fasciitis ball right. foot pain things like that you know uh, mostly offloading uh, i do have some diabetics that i work with as well mostly in the shoe realm but not necessarily as much in the orthotic field there's other prodorsists that have a lot more experience in that that i mm -hmm. usually refer to but uh, at the same time you know it's just you know Google Pedorsics and then P-E-D-O-R-T-H-I-C-S is how you spell it. You know, okay. It's one of those words. It's like, oh, I want to say I was right? having so, the hardest time saying the word. I, I think I was calling <laughs> pedorthitists. <laughs> um, and, uh, it's one of those words. It's like, wh yeah, what do you do? Yeah. And, and, you, and you know what? I mean, truthfully, 
you know, even in my field for, for a number of years, I had no idea that such a field existed and, you know, what those individuals are skilled at doing. And, you know, I have to say that you do a tremendous service um, to your clients and your patients because, again, you know, if you can't get around, it's just going to lead into other problems. You know, yeah. when, you're, when you're not able to walk, it just leads into other, you know, other disease processes. Um, dementia, I think there's been a correlation between walking speed and dementia. So it's just, you know, it's all related. And again, you know, no one wants to be in pain every step that they take. I think, you know, foot pain is probably one of the most um, detrimental pains because you, you can't really stop it, you know, unless you stop walking, you know, if yeah. that's going to be, you know, what's causing it. Whereas, you know, other places of the body, like you can immobilize a hand and, you know, kind of get away with it or you could, you know, and so it's, um, it is really, really, um, a needed, profession I guess that's why it came about so thank you again for taking the time and um, you know and helping us educate or learn more about 3d um, 3d orthotics and if anybody needs to reach out Christian has uh, his contact information so you can go ahead and uh, get in touch with him if you have any specific questions but, um, yeah and you can uh, also ask questions if you're not in the Vancouver area you know we've got um, definitely strong social media presence as well so you're more than welcome to find us on YouTube at Foot Geeks TV. And then also we've got, um, you know, other places like Twitter and Facebook where you can connect with us as well if you have a question regarding your feet or, you know, shoes or orthotics, things like that. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you, Yale. All right. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you so much for joining us today on Step Up with Yale Walker. For any information about our guest, it'll be found in the comments box below this video. For more information on how you can recover from injury, restore vitality, and gain resilience from disease and trauma, all in the comfort of your home, click the link on the screen. Until next time, take good care of your body, mind, and spirit. It's the only true home that you really have.